My dad he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He was quite a well-known figure. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Harry Seacombe was 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 all over the place. Oh, he was. He, yeah, he, he good great move big. for him. I called up Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey. Then I called up my other two mates, <laughs> Ronnie Wood and Rod Stewart, and they said, "Yeah, come, well, let's do it." I went to the loo, and a solid piece of blood fell into the toilet. Oh, and oh, I looked no. at that, and I thought, "Ah, oh. one in eight men will get prostate cancer. One in four men if you're black. There are so many different treatments. It's curable. They inject 80 radioactive titanium seeds inside your prostate. <laughs> so what happens when you go through the airport? I am not a terrorist, I'm sorry, I'm rock and roll. You will notice immediately Yes. The similarity between ourselves and the three musketeers. I've noticed it straight away. You do notice it? Yeah, go on. And uh, we're here to discuss a problem we've all had. Over a cup of water. Over a cup of water. Yeah. And representing, really, Prostate Cancer UK, which is very, very important to uh, all of us. Who noticed what? Let's start with that. My dad was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He was quite a well-known figure. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Harry Seacombe was, was, was all over the place. Oh, he was, he, yeah. He, he could move big. for him. It was quite advanced, and they were going to take his prostate out. But then he had a stroke and became too weak uh, um, mm. to handle the anaesthetic. Unfortunately, by the time he was well enough for the operation, yeah. um, the cancer had spread too oh, far. It really spread sad, in, really into sad. the bone. Yeah. And, and then it was a really unpleasant way to go. Because of that, yeah. I was extra careful to get my, uh, yeah. my prostate checked out as mm. often as possible. I was diagnosed about five, five or six years ago now. Um, and in my case, they found out that it was quite close to the edge of the, oh dear. Of the capsule. Yeah. And so they said, <coughs> in these cases, it's probably best to just have the whole thing take taken, it out. taken out. When did you notice? Did you notice any, any problems with your waterworks? No, no, I didn't have anything. I was uh, doing the Rocky Horror Show in... Um, in London, and uh, I went to the loo, and a solid piece of blood fell into the toilet. Ooh, oh and I looked no. at that, and I thought, ah. So I went to Chris's Hospital in Manchester, yeah. and uh, for f four years I had this every six months, and nothing, they couldn't find anything. Wow. So, and it didn't happen again, wow. until it did happen again, and then the <laughs> fateful day when you go in, and they say, there's no easy way of telling you this, Mr. Morley, but you've got cancer. At that point, from the top of my head, right through the body to the feet and back up again, like a horizontal line, yeah. the brain just goes, chunk. He said, are you okay? I said, well, what does this mean? Not buy any more long playing records. <laughs> he said, no, no, because <laughs> my PSA level was very, very low. And they said, well, you can watch and wait, watch and wait. And after six months, it had gone up to six to 12. He said, come in, take it out. But afterwards, his assistant came around and said, it's a good job he came in, actually, because the, um, the cells had just gone onto the nerve tissue. Oh, so we cut this out as yeah, well, it's gone. Wow. If you've got any ideas that you might have anything yeah. wrong, don't muck about. No. Just go get in, in there, get in there, straight away. Get in. I reckon I was in denial for about 10 years. Huh? You know, I put it down to having a drink at night and a drink late, you know. You get up and have a wee in the night, uh, right, then yeah. it increases, you know. Yeah. So you twice you get up, then you get up three times, then you start to get up four times, you go, hello, something's wrong with you. I had cancer in the throat years ago. Every year I'd go and get a blood test. And so this one nurse said to me, why don't we do a PSA test while we're here? It's a prostate test. I kept thinking to myself, say no, say no. Oh, right, so, right. And so yes came out. And I went, <laughs> yeah, she saved my life. It was, came back as... 5.7. So a week went past and I did another one and it went up to 5.8. In a week? It, within a week. Wow. Yeah. Which means it's going to get aggressive. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Then they did the biopsy. The test came back saying you've got cancer in, uh, in your prostate. And brachytherapy, I've got to tell you, it really works. I've still got my prostate. Yeah, because it was quite new a few years ago. It was, it? yeah. But I mean, my, I had mine eight years ago. My PSA now is, is like less than 1.1. And that's the radioactive beads? They inject 80 radioactive titanium seeds inside your prostate. They start to work over a period of eight to 10 months. What, one at a time, you mean? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I never asked the question. <laughs> you power like, light felt like they were all going off at once. <laughs> so what happens when you go through the airport? Oh, when I go for the airport, I'm <laughs> oh, no I am not a terrorist, I'm sorry, I'm, not, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm rock and roll, not yeah. a terrorist. <laughs> when you said you, you didn't want to get it done, what, why? What was Mainly wrong? because it, it's the old stigma attached to it, you can't get hard on anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. The typical male yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the difference between you and myself and Andy is that we had ours out, and 
the thing is, once you've had it out, you've got possibly yeah. incontinence and you've got possibly yeah. inability to get an erection. Yeah. A lot of people are very nervous about this. Yes, of course they would be. Impotency. Yeah. Um, although I've deliberately said to friends of mine, they go, oh, did you have it out? Yeah. Has that left you with the impotency? I said, well, yeah, I just have to use uh, you know, a needle or something else. But mind you, how many times do you have intercourse? Well, they're all blood <laughs> well, yeah. well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, oh, yeah. me and the wife. Right. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that catches me every time, of course. I actually rang the surgeon. He said, well, there's an answer to this. Uh, I'll send you to this specialist. So I went. So what is the problem, Mr. Morley? I said, well, um, what was the great roaring monster <laughs> is now like a little bird in its nest. <laughs> She said, well, you can have a pump or the needle. Well, I'll try the needle. Is it going to be painful? Oh, no, no, they're very, very fine. I'll give you the minimum dose. Uh, here's the Daily Telegraph and go for a walk in the hospital. <laughs> so I'm walking in the hospital with the paper in front of me and people going, all right, Ken, everything all right? I said, yeah, it's fine, fine, fine. I've just got a huge bone on, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's great, yeah, yeah, see you later. I was lucky. Um, when I went in to have the operation, the surgeon said to me, um, it, it's quite close to the capsule and very close to the nerves that operate the erection. And oh, he dear. said, are you very keen on keeping your erection? Mm. I said, what do you think? <laughs> he said, well, we'll have to be very yes. careful then. Mm. Um, yeah. And yes. touch wood, I'm, I'm not impotent. Yes. I've said it there. Um, yeah. What I found quite surprising was that when I started to talk to people about my prostate cancer, uh, friends of mine, they went, oh, yeah, yeah. And they either, <laughs> they either had it or had had it mm. in the oh. past, oh. but had never talked about it. Oh, right. well, mm. One in eight men will get prostate cancer. One in four... Men, if you're black. One in four. Black, yeah, one oh, in four. That's wow. a big, you know, yeah. Yeah. big thing. Yeah. And nobody knows really why. Wow. Mm. Well, my dad thought it was very important to talk about it. It's At good. a time when, uh, it, it was the 90s, the time when, when people really yeah. weren't. Mm. And in that way, he was a bit of a, he was a, bit of a trailblazer. Because, yeah, because it was one of those taboo things you just didn't, yeah. uh, didn't mention. Yeah. But just, just getting the message out yeah. to get checked. Yeah. Because yeah. it is preventable, there are so many different uh, treatments nowadays. Now, nowadays yeah. Are, yeah. Yeah. It's curable, and men live with prostate cancer for, for years and years and years. Yeah. When I became aware of prostate cancer, what it can do to someone very, very quickly and spread so fast, I thought, I've got to speak out and tell people about this. So the first one I did was I called up Pete Townsend and Roger Daughtry. I said, look, I'm trying to raise some mo money and some really awareness for prostate cancer. And I said, yeah, go. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. They got a great lineup. We raised about two hundred grand, two hundred and fifty wow. grand. Oh, good. Then I did it again. I called up my other two mates, <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Wood and Rod Stewart, and raised another two hundred fifty grand. Really. Oh, yeah. good. You know Excellent. The awareness is is something that really we've got to get across to people. I know. I I I got two boys. When I told them I had prostate cancer, they didn't really know what it was at first. They heard the word cancer and both went, oh! And the look in their faces, you know, sort of said it all. And I said, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not leaving you. And when you get to my age, make sure you, you get it checked out and talk, yeah. and talk about it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, people call me up and say, Kenny, I, I've got this diagnosed with prostate cancer. I said, well, okay, look, I'll come around, I know where you live. But I don't just want to talk to you, I want to talk to your family, your whole family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they said, well, well, no, I don't want anyone to know. I said, no, I've got to talk to your whole family. And I just tell them what I've been through, put their mind at ease straight away. Yeah. And that mm. really helps them. Yeah. I mean, the, the majority of people have a limited understanding of uh, the human body. My son said, uh, well, where is it, the prostate? Is it behind your head? <laughs> you know, is it under your knee? And then he said later on, you haven't had to cut your testicles off of it, your body. <laughs> no, no, not that, no. Notice they've built this little badge to make everyone aware of prostate cancer. The more uh, awareness, the more funds, the more uh, accurate the tests can become. Yeah. And this is why this is so important, because the more money, the quicker the cure. Exactly. Well, it's been very pleasant. Yeah, it has. I suppose we'll be reading the uh, obituary columns in the Daily Telegraph now to see <laughs> which one of us oh, go first. Oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, Kenny's gone. Look, Kenny's gone. Oh, Kenny's gone. Uh, yeah. Hey, Kenny, have you heard Kenny's gone? Yeah, Andy's finished. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> <laughs>